uh, risk management. I'll talk a little bit about this. Now, there's a whole evening about risk management. Next one, please. Um, and risk management is literally that. It's looking at your church and saying, what do we need to do to keep people safe? It doesn't need to be onerous, doesn't need to be a, a massive responsibility. And the one thing I would say is that, again, in order to be able to help you and to, uh, to, to keep things as simple as possible, we've actually got uh, templates and how-to guides on all of these things. And again, I'll send links to those. We've even got a full um, sort of pack on how to uh, do uh, risk assessments and how to do uh, risk assessments around your building, around your churchyard, uh, and for activities as well. So I won't go into lots of detail here. If you go through to the next next slide, please. But like I say, on our website, and I'll provide these links, lots of uh, guidance notes, self-assessment tools, videos, um, and templates as well for health and safety, risk management, fire risk assessments. We've done a lot of work with the health and safety executive because we ensure thousands or tens of thousands of, of heritage buildings across the UK. Um, they're not built to current building standards. So it's not like a brand new office building or a, or a shopping centre or something like that. Um, you know, the, the steps won't be necessarily even, the, 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 the pathways, uh, you know, won't be perfectly smooth. But that's okay because it's a beautiful old building. We want to keep it looking like that. So there's the balance between preserving what's there, working with the authorities to make sure that it's, that it's safe, uh, but and also, like I say, keeping keeping the, uh, your visitors, parishioners, and others safe as well. So there's lots of information there about, about that, and I'll send the, that out to you. Um, we've also got uh, approved suppliers lists for things like uh, alarms, roof alarms, that sort of thing. And the other thing as well is that we do have risk a risk advice line as well. So if you're again, if you're concerned about something in your church and you think, what do I need to do about this? Again, you can always ring me or you can ring the, the risk advice line and there are experts there, surveyors and risk management experts that will be able to offer advice. Again, all of this is free. It's all part of the service uh, when you insure with us. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Again, huge amount of information. These guides are great. The health and safety guide is, is great if, you, if you've not seen it. Um, there's, there's a, a template that you can use, but there's also an, another document that goes with it, which is a completed one for a fictitious church. So you can look at it and think, oh, right, that's what they mean. That's, that's the information I need here. And then you can use that to do that. Again, if you need any help with that, just let me know. Um, slips, trips and falls, uh, it's still a massive uh, part of, uh, uh, makes up a, a massive part of the claims that we have. Uh, so, um, uh, so there's lots of guidance on that, and also obviously with with COVID as well. Uh, we're out of restrictions now, but in the early days of, of COVID, we we work quite closely with the uh, uh, with the Church in Wales and the Church of England to, to to make sure that things were done safely. I mean, who would have thought, you know, two three years ago that we'd be sitting on Zoom having a meeting like this uh, on a on a Tuesday in uh, in June? Um, but we are. And that's as a result of, of the changes that we've all made as a result of COVID. Uh, next slide, please. Now, that's, that's a very wordy slide. I'll send you a copy of this, but there, part of the responsibility that the church has is to, is to uh, make sure that everything's kept up to date. And there's information there about your electric insulation, your lightning conductor and your fire extinguisher and everything else. Uh, again, I'm not gonna go through that because we're running out of time but I will send a copy of that slide to you so you know, and there's links on that on, on how to do all of those things and how to do it safely. Again, any questions, just give us a ring. Next one, please. And then we've got this, uh, our, our risk calendar again, I'll send a link to this, but sometimes the task around looking after churches is, um, oh, hang on, I'm just trying to, just trying to pause my, my countdown clock. There we go, before it explodes. Um, sometimes the task around looking after our parish churches seems immense and it seems unwieldy, but when you break it down into small chunks like this, our, our risk management calendar, so there are different things that you can do throughout the year, relevant things, uh, and, and you do it bit by bit. And that's that's the you know, it's that thing about how do you eat an elephant, you know, one spoonful at a time. So this is the this is the, the sort of way to do it. Again, uh, I'll send details of this. Now you can also um, 
we do a, a monthly e-newsletter as well, which is great. And there's lots of articles on that. And some of them are to do with risk management and looking after your churches. Again, if you'd like to subscribe to that, just reply to the email that I send you and I'll make sure you get added to that. Okay, uh, next slide, please. So quick thing about claims. Um, next one, please. Thankfully, pictures like the ones on the left there, um, they don't happen very often. And we're very grateful for that. Um, not just because obviously we have to put the building right after a major loss like that, but um, we, we know how upsetting it is for a community to lose a church, um, for it to be damaged in such a way. We've had a couple of quite large claims recently where uh, there's been fires, one started by arson, uh, kids breaking into the church, and another one where uh, it was one of the few thatched um, churches over in East Anglia, I think it was, and the contractor was working on the on the uh, on the thatch on the roof, or actually replacing the lead around the edge of the parapet, um, and was using uh, hot uh, um, uh, heat uh, up there, and um, and set the set the thatch on fire, and it 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 burnt very very quickly, and um, we're working with both in both of those cases to try and rebuild the building and get it back to its former glory. Um, the one thing I would say is that if you, if there is anything that happens, uh, whether it's an injury to someone, damage to somebody else's property, or damage to your own property, always, always ring us. Always speak to our claims team. Um, we don't want you to reinvent the wheel. Thankfully, incidents and claims on churches don't happen that often. And it may be that you're in your history of, of, of working with the diocese or working as a, in the in the church um, as, a, as a church official that you've never had to deal with a claim. And that's great. And long may it continue. Um, but when you do, you want someone to literally stand next to you and put an arm around you and say, it's going to be OK. And that's what we do. And we try and do it really, really well. Um, so call on the expertise that we have. Don't fight these things on your own. Don't try and do everything on your own. You, know, you pay your insurance in order to be able to make a claim. And most of the time, thankfully, we the claims are, are, are settled um, and um uh, and, 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 you know, we try and get people back on their feet uh, and get churches back functioning again, being that vital part of, uh, of, of community life. Next one, please. <clears throat> again, I'll put, I'll put these numbers and things on there. Um, but that thing at the, the, the last line there, speak to the team even if you're not sure whether it's a claim, it won't prejudice your policy or the claim or your cover if you do so so always ring us our, our claims team are lovely um and um they deal with this sort of thing all the time hopefully you as as church wardens and and, and pcc members you you may only have to deal with this once or maybe not not at all in your uh, in your tenure as, uh, as a church official but if you do then ring us and we'll be able to help next one please so again, lots of other things that we could do to help out with um, our church uh, advice line, our risk management advice line, our church claims. There's me, I can, I can help. I'll say, again, I'll send you those details there. And there's one area that I've not mentioned, which is uh, uh, the support that we, uh, that we introduced uh, in the first year of, of, uh, of COVID. Um, obviously, most of my time is spent going out and doing these sort of presentations to churches and groups of churches and working with the diocese and with the RBCW. And when we went into the first lockdown, we couldn't do it, obviously, because we weren't allowed to go anywhere. So I had to make sure my team was kept busy. So we just rang up and spoke to lots of our customers. Um, and, um, and as we went around and we were talking to people, the thing that struck me, there were two things that came out really, really clearly. The first one was people were saying, when this is all over, and bearing in mind, this was in sort of April and May after the first lockdown started. People were saying, when this is all over, we don't know whether we're going to have volunteers left to do the work. And secondly, they were saying, we don't know where the money's going to come from. Now, we, we can't unfortunately magic up some more volunteers for you. But what we did do is we, we worked really quickly on developing our fundraising hub. Uh, now, I did a session with my colleague, uh, Heather, uh, a, a, about six weeks ago, I think it was, and we uh, uh, on our, uh, our resources that are available on fundraising. 
and it, there's a we've produced a thing called fundraising in a box which is a, a resource pack uh, which has been sent out to every parish um again if you haven't got one of those and you'd like one contact me i can get one arranged for you to get uh, one sent out for you but it's a it's a, a really lovely resource just to be able to to stop and think um uh you know if you all of a sudden you, you've got to think about um uh, raising money for a project or for uh for the for the work the church wants to get involved in you've identified maybe during covid that there's a need in your community you think right okay well we'll we'll start to do that now but we need more money to, to continue it on there are places you can go just for support um so that's all included in that fundraising pack also on the website there's lots of webinars and stuff as well on there that you can you can just uh, watch and for some great advice it even tells you how to do things like um how to put a donate button on your uh, on your um, on your website how to use uh, those sort of gofundme and uh, and and uh, uh, giving pages that are on are, are on uh, uh, online these days <clears throat> it will also uh, it'll also tell you how to um, connect with your community using social media to, to get to let them know that you're that you you want to do this um, and and just get them on board um, and and there's some great examples of, of how to do that. So there's lots of things that we can do to help and and hopefully that um, this has shone a, a little bit of a light on the, um, uh, on some of those things. 